feeling what is up my lemon heads and welcome back to the lemonade stand or welcome if you are new my name is brianna i am a certified personal trainer a big huge biology nerd and a registered dietitian to be today we've got another episode of you all watching me react to and critique beach body workouts while i educate you in the process before we proceed if you love science-based health wellness and fitness education with some lols and some dry sarcasm along the way hit that subscribe button to join the lemonade stand i would really love to have you here without further ado let's make lemonade all right here's the first one here we go What did her on-screen text say? It's not, can you handle the fire? It's, are you willing to walk through it? Uh, no. No, I'm not. I guess that's supposed to be motivating. I get it. Like, I get the message. When things get tough, you fight through it. That's what you do when you show up to your workouts. You want to be challenged, right? You show up to put in work. But, uh, I don't know if I, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> that analogy anyway man we're hitting the ground running today with this one so we just watched two exercises i have no idea what beach body program they're from i trust you all will let me know though you guys are really good about um doing that regardless of the program these are from uh and assuming they are beach body workouts because this is a beach body consultant doing them i believe pretty sure yeah i checked they're both completely ridiculous uh but not for the exercise they are ridiculous in my opinion because she's unnecessarily adding equipment which is something that we see a lot honestly in these workouts like buying stuff you don't need just because it's on sale stop it in this first exercise she's doing like a single leg jump thing which honestly isn't terrible i mean i can think of a better variation but i don't think it's terrible in and of itself but what i do find unnecessary is like she's added the resistance band around her her legs like that what is it doing there i don't see the band doing anything honestly except getting in the way and just being cumbersome so just getting in the way of the, the the actual decent workout that she's trying to do i don't really see a reason for it and then the next thing she's doing is star jumps which i like star jumps but she has added the resistance band to not only her thighs but around her arms too like around her wrists it's honestly astounding to me that that band around her thighs isn't snapping up the reason it's not snapping up is actually probably because it's super light and that's not me that's not me shaming her that's just my insinuation it's probably really light lighter bands have a lesser likelihood of like rolling up when you put tension on them but if she's using a band that's light enough to not snap up while she's jumping around like that then what's even the point of adding it in the first place? She's not the first ever beach body consultant I have seen adding a resistance band why am I leaning back this is the third video I filmed today just having a little stretch. Oh, my back. So this is not the first time I've seen a beach body uh, person, or I guess I should say a super trainer, instruct consultants, the consultants to add, um, like to add a resistance band or a glute band to an exercise and it like, the end result is something that kind of doesn't always make sense. As far as alternatives, I definitely have a demo for the first one she's doing. As far as the star jumps, I don't have a demonstration for that one. To that I just say, just do star jumps. There's no reason to add a resistance band like she's doing. Two resistance bands at that. Like wearing every necklace you have just because you have it. Like you don't have to use it just because you have it. I will now demonstrate for you what I think is a better alternative to the first thing she was doing. So I'm showing the exact same thing she was doing, except I removed all the extra equipment she was using. I'm not holding dumbbells and I don't have a band on my legs. This is just as effective and I would even argue it's more effective because my legs are not being restricted by a band. Next one. The world will open up to me. I, I, you know, maybe I need some different hopes or maybe I need some different language, you know, surrounding some of these things. Why is she doing that on like a beach towel? Hmm. She's got dumbbells in her hand and she's doing lateral lunges and she's kind of popping up and then going into like a front kick. I really don't have any major complaints about this exercise, but like the last one, I don't, I don't think adding the weights is necessary. I do also want to say that she's holding those, uh, those weights, which do look decent size. 
and jumping around and uh, she didn't wear no shoes. And she's on a beach towel. Why is she standing on a beach towel? So yeah, I, I'd be, I don't know. I'm a little worried about her, about her little toes. Dropping a weight on your toe is no laughing matter. I've dropped a five pound weight plate on my foot before and my foot freaking bruised. Oh, by the way, if you're about to comment something snarky and annoying about me commenting on her being barefoot, I do recommend you watch this video in full first, then come back and leave your comment. There are times that are appropriate to exercise barefoot and there are times that are not. In my opinion, one of those inappropriate times is high impact stuff where you were jumping around. I've researched the topic. I know there are times when barefoot training is perfectly okay. I know a lot of podiatrists hate shoes. I'm not a fucking podiatrist. I know sometimes with certain lifts, people like to go barefoot, like with squatting or deadlifts. I know. If you are my client and I am training you in a gym, I will not allow you to take your shoes off during high impact training. And if you don't like that, then well, it's a good thing you're not my client then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anyway, her lateral lunge is not that great. Um, she could be sitting lower on that working leg. She could also hurt her back eventually because she's She's more bending over as opposed to sitting down into the lunge, like um, back onto her glutes. You know, I don't know if it's just me or if it's like, if other people have this problem, but sometimes doing a lateral lunge is holding dumbbells in both hands just feels weird to me. And it's just, it's sometimes awkward. Like when you're lunging down, like what do you do with that other hand? Like, did you let it go in between your legs? Does it stay over here? You know what I'm saying? It's kind of strange. Um, so I sometimes, when I'm doing lateral lunges, I will use one dumbbell and I will, let me, I gotta find something to hold. I have one dumbbell and I'll hold it up like this or I'll hold it up like that way, like that. I know that's tough to, I know it's tough to see, but I, I think holding two dumbbells like that is awkward. I think it's less awkward when you hold one dumbbell, um, like the way I just showed you, or you can do a barbell on your back, or you can just do body weight, not hold any uh, extra weight at all. And then the transition to the front jump is weird, but I don't think it's entirely her fault that it looks weird. I think this could be and should be a body weight exercise. I don't think she needs to be holding the weights. It kind of seems like they're getting in the way actually more than anything. So I'll show you pretty much the same thing, but I'm just gonna get rid of the weights. So once again, I'm doing basically the same thing as her, but I'm not holding any weights. Lateral lunges are always weird for me and you can kind of see my weirdness coming through with these if you look really close. I, they're a little bit cumbersome for me, I don't know. I'm told I have long legs, maybe that's why, but I'm short. Anyway, I'm getting down into the lateral lunge and then slowly bringing that working leg up in front of me. So I am engaging my lower abs just a little bit. All right, so this next one we're gonna take a look at is from the Beachbody program, Nine Week Control Freak. As all of you here know, Nine Week Control Freak is just one of my favorite Beachbody programs. It is just so fun and so dynamic and just super functional and I love it. I think I have actually shown this exercise before a long time ago. Ms. Autumn Calabrese developed nine week control freak. And so she is responsible for this monstrosity. What the f is going on here? Ball between knees, dumbbells in hands, kind of doing a conventional deadlift, but not really because she has a ball between her knees. The cherry on top of this for me is that lean forward onto her toes and then like tilting back to flat feet. I don't think I find this like overtly dangerous, but I do personally find it stupid. It's just silly in my opinion. Why can't you just do a conventional deadlift? That's too normal though for a beach body super trainer, huh? Too normal, right? But the ball between the knees, I've said this before, I think that's just my guess at them grasping at incorporating equipment somehow so they can justify making people pay for it um, because that ball is doing absolutely nothing between her knees. Maybe she's like, maybe she's squeezing it and it's kind of like getting her inner thighs. Maybe, I don't know. All right, so how about we try something else? <laughs> Alrighty, so here's the next one. This one was kind of confusing because there's kind of a lot happening. I don't hate everything about this. I mean, I don't really hate it 
generally, but I don't I don't hate every component of this. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Part of it looks like like a power clean to a to a shoulder press with a squat added, like a squat to clean. The part that I find disrespectful is this weird, awful upright row that she has added. I wonder if that's how the workout is being demonstrated on BOD or I wonder if uh, like it's supposed to be like that. Either way, she is really mad at her shoulders. She is jerking that weight like crazy. This is like our mantra at this point in this series. You do not need to go that high for upright rows. This is such a common mistake that I feel like I see more people doing upright rows incorrectly than I see them doing them correctly. You don't need to go that high. You only need to go up to about just under your chest boob height if you will pulling the weights and not just pulling but she's like really jerking those weights too pulling them up like that puts your shoulders in a really compromising position and can damage them over time especially if you're using really heavy weight and especially if you're jerking the weights around like they owe you money why this combination of movements is being thrown together like this i don't understand i mean i do Let's, let's back up. I do understand. Beachbody Super Trainers, they have to pack as much as they can in a limited amount of time. So they usually give birth to monstrosities like this. Like actually job one. I think that's one of the alerts of job one. Job one is 20 minutes. It's a 20 minute workout. That's not a lot of time for a workout. You can definitely get a good workout in that 20 minutes. If I only had 20 minutes to work out, I would do like some circuit training, uh, some compound full body movements, things like that. Yeah, so I, I kind of, I do understand sometimes like the craziness that we sometimes see with these workouts. They don't have a lot of time. What about just like a power clean, like a power clean to press, clean press, clean press. Can you clean press close? So I already mentioned the technical difficulties from before and the lovely banana gave you guys some fantastic workout tips that I know you will apply to your life. Now for this one also remember I said the footage of me doing the demo was somehow corrupted. So instead of Mr. Banana giving you guys some more workout tips, I figured I could actually find a demo to show you guys online. So I scoured YouTube and I found this a demonstration from the YouTube channel Rogue Fitness. It's short and sweet, it's to the point and it's a demonstration. It's basically just, he's basically just demonstrating how to do it power clean to shoulder press or a push press. The best part about it is he doesn't run his mouth for five minutes like a lot of other people do. He gets straight to it. So I will link this demonstration below. I got an Oreo because I was upset. So this next one, I actually don't have a demo for it as much as I do just have a complaint. <laughs> That was a good Oreo. I want to preface this by saying this girl on top of being a beach body consultant, she's also a fitness professional. Um, based on her profile, I, it, I'm pretty sure she's a personal trainer. Always rubs me the wrong way when I see personal trainers like as part of MLMs, like fitness MLMs. I guess really the only fitness MLM is I can think of is really beach body. It's probably why they're out here killing it, honestly, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, it really rubs me the wrong way when I see personal trainers, like fitness professionals overall in general, like as beach body coaches or just like anyone highly educated um, associate their credentials and their education with an MLM. But I digress. You guys guess at this point, what do you think my complaint for this one is? If you guessed upright rows, you'd be right. They're terrible. She's going way too high. I'm more bothered by it than usual because she's a personal trainer. What are you doing? Like you should know better. And then she combined the row with like a warrior one, which if you're familiar with yoga, a warrior one is like, it's kind of like a, kind of like a reverse lunge, but you're not lowering down. Um, you're just kind of stepping back and then holding it. And then she's doing a bent over row too. It's weird to me because she's also stepping back in the row. Hold on, I have to watch it again. Why doesn't she just bend over to do that row? I don't get why she has a step back. This is another classic case of individually, I like these exercises and I think they're fine, but adding them together just kind of results in this big Frankenstein of a workout. Upright rows that are too high and then bent over rows. And she's for some reason stepping back and doing like warrior one, two. I don't understand the purpose of that. She could just bend over. If I wanted to do an upright row in a bent over row like this, I would separate them. I'd have my heavy weight over here and I do my bent over row and I have my light to moderate weight over here and then I do my upright row. So yeah, just do a goddamn superset. All right, so this last one is from the newest program, job one. 
Yay! For those of you who don't know, Job One was developed by former Peloton trainer Jennifer Jacobs, and she's now a Beachbody super trainer. I actually have a super short clip of her doing the exercise in question, but it's really short, so I'm gonna replay it a couple times. And I also have a longer one of somebody kind of doing the same thing. I think they're supposed to be imitating her, but it's like, it doesn't look like, I don't, it doesn't look how it's supposed to look, I don't think. You'll, you'll see what I mean, I'll just play it. So here's Jennifer first. See, it's a super short clip. You can, she's only doing one, it's so short that she's only doing one slide. Here's the other one I was talking about. This girl looks super muscular. It just kills me. She's got a whole setup all around her. She's got dumbbells all around her, but she's like using a resistance band. I know one of the things with this program, with job one is uh, it's 20 minutes and resistance band and dumbbells. And like, that's like that's the thing, like that's the allure with this program. I've noticed kind of every Beachbody program, it seems like each one kind of has like a, a thing, <laughs> like a piece of, I'm saying a thing. By that, I mean like a piece of equipment that's supposed to be like the highlight of the program. And I guess with job one, it's like resistance band is one of the highlights of this program, resistance band and, and dumbbell. Jennifer Jacobs has a resistance band held out in front of her with her arms straight. And then she's pulling it down. I've done something like this before, but better. I feel like even though all they have is a resistance band, there's still a better way to do this. I think I've said this in a, in a past video. Well, for you, it's a past video, but for me, it's one that I just recorded like an hour ago. Anchor the band onto something, holding a band. And then this arm's like straining to hold the band up. And then this arm just pulling it down. And then you're just, I don't really understand. I wonder if that's supposed to be like for back, like maybe kind of simulating a lap pull down. I don't know. Then we saw the other clip of the other girl, the girl in the, the black leggings and the black job one crop doing it. The thing I'm a little confused about is I think they're supposed to be doing the same thing, but the other girl we saw has her elbows bent at the sides. So it's more like she's doing a tricep push down, which um, to be honest, I actually think is more effective than what Jennifer Jacobs is doing. I am making the assumption that because Jennifer Jacobs is the creator of this program, the way she's doing it is technically the right way. So we're gonna go based on what Jennifer Jacobs is doing. That being said, I'm not positive what this is supposed to be doing. I feel like it's trying to be a single arm lap pull down. It's supposed to be like unilateral Bilateral or bilateral. I mean, well, if one arm is supposed to be holding up the band, then I guess it has to be unilateral, right? Oh, it's so weird. Why doesn't she just have people attach the resistance band to something like, like a door frame or like something sturdy instead of just holding it up with the other hand? I do think this is hard, but I think that it's just like, that's it. Like, it's just hard to be hard. <laughs> they say that all the time. I know, I'm sorry. But I'm just, I'm not so sure if if you're doing this in the setting of to get a to get a good workout, to get a good full body workout, I'm not sure it's functional for that. This does actually remind me of something I've done in physical therapy before though. Um, but in this but in this setting, this is not physical therapy. This is somebody in the setting of their, you know, wherever they are, home gym, home gym, whatever. This is somebody in the setting of somebody who is not presumably in physical therapy, has no physical limitations, and they're doing a workout and they're doing this. So this isn't physical therapy. So I don't understand the purpose of doing it like this for the workout. There's a better way to do this. So I will show it to you. So here's what I meant by anchoring the band to something. In my case, I've got a handled resistance band loop, whatever you wanna call it, and I'm securing it to a spin bike because that is what I had. I'm kneeling down and what I'm doing is kind of a modified single arm lat pull down. I'm keeping my arms straight, but I have a slight bend in my elbow and I'm squeezing my shoulder blade in and using my lat to pull the weight down to my side. In conclusion, oh, beach body super trainers. What's inside your beautiful minds? Something that I've uh, wondered is why Jennifer Jacobs left Peloton to go to beach body. I'm sh I mean, I'm sure it was probably motivated by money, but I wonder if there's if there's more to the story. A lot of the articles I've read about it say, say that she like abruptly left Peloton. I'm just being nosy though. I mean, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> anyway, I'm tired today. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't have much of an outro. This is the third video I filmed today. I've got school stuff to do and I have been up since 4.15 in the morning because I went to Orange Theory this morning, which was great. It was great. <laughs> but uh, yeah, 
I got I got school stuff to do. And I don't even know why I just said in conclusion. You guys know the deal anyway. I would like it if Beachbody Super Trainers stopped releasing stupid workouts. And I would also like it if Beachbody Consultants would stop calling themselves coaches because I believe that it is misleading to the uninformed consumer who is genuinely looking for fitness help. I always get comments on, uh, not always, but when I get pissed off, when I get, I mean, I'm hesitant to call them hate comments or not hate, I don't consider them hate comments. I consider them annoying. Um, but you can always tell who's in Beachbody by the tone of their comment under these videos that I do. So many of them are like, they're not calling themselves coaches. Actually, a lot of you are. And a lot of them take it a step further and they put health and wellness coach on their on their uh, Instagram profile. I could go on Instagram right now and just like search under the hashtag Team Beachbody. And I could, I bet I could find five five Instagram profiles of beach body consultants who have health and wellness coach in their profile. Guarantee. I'm not going to do it right now because I'm tired, but I've, I've seen it before. Okay. Oh God. Anyway, I'm done, man. I'm tired. Uh, thank you so very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram. Uh, stay tuned for more shenanigans and I will see you all in the next one. Bye. Hey. Hey. <laughs> What's up? What's up? Do you guys want to go outside? <laughs> okay, let's go. Oh, what a big stretch. Come on. Where the hell's Alpha? I bet she's upstairs on the bed. Let's go see if she's on the bed. Cause she's not down here on the ottoman. That's her other favorite spot. You're right where I thought you'd be. Hey baby. <laughs> hey mama. You wanna say bye bye? You wanna say bye bye? Say bye. <laughs> say bye.